Tonight's talk is Consciousness, Creativity, and the Brain. And um, if you have a golf ball size consciousness, when you read a book, you'll have a golf ball size understanding. When you look out, a golf ball size awareness. And when you wake up in the morning, a golf ball size wakefulness. But if you could expand that consciousness, then you read the book, more understanding. You look out, more awareness, and when you wake up, more wakefulness. It's consciousness. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us. And it's right at the source and base of mind, right at the source of thought, and it's also at the source of all matter. And Maharishi Mahesh Yogi teaches a technique called Transcendental Meditation. It's a simple, easy, effortless technique, yet supremely profound, that allows any human being to dive within, experiencing subtler levels of mind and intellect, and transcend and experience this ocean of pure consciousness. This pure consciousness is called by modern physics the unified field. It's at the base of all mind and all matter. And they now say, modern science says, all of matter, everything that is a thing emerges from this field. And this field has qualities like bliss, intelligence, creativity, universal love, energy, peace. And it's not the intellectual understanding of this field, but the experiencing of it that does everything. You dive within and transcending, experiencing this field of pure consciousness and you enliven it, you unfold it, it grows. And the final outcome of this growth of consciousness is called enlightenment. And enlightenment is the full potential of all of us human beings. And a side effect of enlivening this consciousness is negativity starts to recede. When I started meditating, I was filled with anxieties, filled with fears, kind of a, a depression and anger. And I took this anger out on my first wife. And after two weeks of meditation, she comes to me and she says, what's going on? And I was quiet for a moment because it could have been any number of things she might have been referring to. <laughs> but um, I finally said, what do you mean? And she said, this anger, where did it go? And I didn't even realize it had lifted. Now, these negative things like anger and depression and sorrow, they're beautiful things in a story, but they're like a poison to the filmmaker. They're a poison to the painter. They're a poison to creativity. They're like a vice grip. If you are super depressed, you can't hardly get out of bed, let alone think ideas, have that creativity flowing. So it's money in the bank to get that beautiful consciousness growing, which is flowing creativity. The ability to catch ideas at a deeper level 
intuition grows. This field is a field of pure knowingness. You dive in there, you sort of just know how to go. You know how to solve solutions. It's like an ocean of solutions. And you, you can just feel this thing growing. But the ultimate thing for me is the enjoyment of the doing, the enjoyment of life grows huge. I love making films now more than ever before. Ideas flow more. Everybody has more fun on the set. Creativity flows. There's no, people look like friends and not like enemies. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing and it's us. In Vedic science, this field of pure consciousness is called Atma, the self, the self of us all. At that level, as Dr. John Hagelin would tell you, at that level of life, we are all one. We're one. Diversity up here, unity down below. It's, it's, a, you'll, it's a great thing for the filmmaker. Thank you. I, I think I had so many anxieties and fears and I felt those lifting and bliss is a thing in this field, the unified field. Bliss, they say, is the sweetest nectar of life. Bliss is physical, emotional, mental, spiritual happiness. And you can vibrate with this bliss. And it's this happiness from within. They have a saying, true happiness isn't out there. True happiness lies within. And I always wondered, where is this within? And, and they don't say where it is. And then they don't even say how to get to it. This is the beauty of this technique. There's lots of forms of meditation, but with transcendental meditation, to me, the key is the word transcend, to dive all the way in. It's a huge realm between the surface of life and this fundamental pure consciousness, but it's there. And when you're in it, you know you're in it. It's familiar, but it's you. And right away, a happiness, but it's not like a goofball happiness. It's a, it's, a, it's a thick beauty. It's a thick beauty to appreciate life and living. And why suffer? Suffering starts to go. And people say, well, you gotta have anger. You gotta have an edge, you know, to create. You gotta know about anger. You gotta have energy. You gotta have clarity to create. You gotta be able to catch ideas. You gotta be able to be strong enough to fight unbelievable pressure and stress and the whole thing in this world. That will lift because this whole thing is tied to world peace, but it's gonna be a better world, but it's still a very tough world. And this just gives you more and more and more ability to say, it just looks beautiful. It's way, 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 way better. And this happened right away. Thank you. You bet. Multidimensional words create a multidimensional reality. So in the lowest dimensions, you have words like I and me, right? Which denote like possession and stuff. But I and me are first and second dimensional. I is like top down I, it's a singular point, okay, within a circle. And then me denotes a boundary, okay? So it's like when spirit first existed, it was just a boundary. Very much like this graph right here. Spirit was a boundary, okay? It was just awareness within an extent, that's it. Then awareness and consciousness decided to move, right? Which gave us our third dimensional form, which is my, denoting motion, right? Motion towards something, motion away from something. That's not mine, that is mine. Which created our fourth dimension, which we see here as a they, right? It's the body, the they, there is a separation. But what um, most spiritual teachings teach us is that we eventually go from the they to the us, okay? Universal consciousness. Let's talk about meditation. Currently, there are 7.8 billion people on the planet, and you just happen to be here in this exact time in which this information is coming to light. Modern science says that we have in between 40 to 60,000 thoughts every day. It is nigh impossible to control them. The point of meditation is not to stop your thinking. That's where a lot of people go wrong with the concept of meditation. But rather, it is to teach you positive, mental, habitual, harmonious thinking. And to not be so caught up in involuntarily, violently reacting to your emotional, habitual patterns. 
rewiring and training your brain to accept these new patterns and positive ways of thinking and awareness to become aware of new opportunities to say what? Make income. Meet new people or friends. Meet the love of your life. Find your soul tribe. Discover your life's purpose. And I want to touch on a technique that I personally use. There are many forms of meditation, but the one that I have found that personally works for me the most is transcendental meditation. Specifically, a sub-branch of transcendental meditation called the still mind technique, which constitutes the act of stilling your mind and allowing your thoughts to happen so you can observe them, acknowledge them, and allow them to pass into the voidness of your mind. This builds the pattern of not reacting involuntarily and violently to the way your emotional patterns can control you. Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it fate, thus allowing your intuitive patterns to emerge. This is so important because everybody runs on autopilot. They call it television programming for a reason. The benefits of this in part three. Meditation, the act of bringing your many selves back to one. Remember, 7.8 billion people on the planet, okay? Constantly divided by the walls and barriers that are put forth in front of us by the media and social, cultural norms that are just blindly accepted. Skin color, just ethnicity backgrounds in general, dialects, what I like to call barriers of understanding. These are all layers of ignorance that we can remove, okay, through these deeper levels of meditation because we are all connected to this global field of consciousness, okay, everybody? We are all connected all the time. And the more that you actually practice meditation, the more that your actual intuition and your waking life can guide you by using positive thought patterns and biofeedback to manifest the things that you want into your life. So say you're wanting to earn more income, this technique will allow you to be more aware, more mindful of opportunities to earn more income. Meditation, 